Greetings, my minnow friends. Are you ready for more education on menopause? If so, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I like to call my channel Menopause University because it really is school. And I sure hope you realize what a vast, detailed, and dedicated education I'm giving you. I've told you before that menopause is the most neglected topic on earth. I am the only person providing a real education on it. And if you get this education either by watching all the videos in order or watching all 15 webinars in order or watching the 12 hour DVD or reading my menopause book or having a consultation with me, you will know 90% more than most doctors. Not only that, if you have a consultation, you'll get it all tailored specifically to you, and you'll learn precisely how to navigate the medical, alternative, wellness, fitness, all the systems in order to get what you want for managing your menopause your way. And just as you did in school, we cover the material in units. And right now, we're embarking on a unit that addresses the three big diseases that are due to estrogen deficiency. They are heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's. We're in the section of the unit where we compare and contrast the three diseases. And last week, we compared heart attack and osteoporosis. Today, we'll compare heart attack and Alzheimer's. Now, the reason you should watch this video is because comparing the diseases like this elucidates so much more than just learning about each one in isolation. It helps you see things from different angles or perspectives. And different perspectives enable you to understand things at a deeper level. So, all the information is in my book, but not in the same format you'll get in this video. So, Heart attack and Alzheimer's. Do you think of them as being very similar or very dissimilar? Do you feel at higher risk for one than the other? Do you worry more about one than the other? And is there anything in particular about either heart attack or Alzheimer's that really gets your attention? How would you answer this quiz question? The most significant difference between heart attack and Alzheimer's disease is A, the gender difference. Heart attacks are more common in men, while Alzheimer's is more common in women. B, the gender difference. Heart attacks are more common in women, while Alzheimer's is more common in men. C, the mortality rate. Heart attacks kill twice as many women as Alzheimer's. D, the mortality rate. Alzheimer's kills twice as many women as heart attacks. E, the rate of disease progression. Heart attacks develop slowly over a long period of time, while Alzheimer's develops more quickly over a short period of time. F, the rate of disease progression. <laughs> Alzheimer's develops slowly over a long period of time, while heart attacks develop more quickly over a short period of time. G, the genetic component. Alzheimer's has more genetic mutations that are inherited. H, the genetic component. Heart attack has more genetic mutations that are inherited. I, family history. It is more common to have a family history of heart attacks than it is to have a family history of Alzheimer's. J, family history. It is more common to have a family history of Alzheimer's than it is to have a family history of heart attacks. K, age. Heart attacks affect women at a younger age than Alzheimer's. L, age. Alzheimer's affects women at a younger age than heart attacks. Well, what did you pick? Was it super easy or were you a bit unsure of yourself. Well, here's the quiz question again with the answer in bold. All right, so the genetics are the biggest difference and the most significant difference between the two. Now, let's delve into addressing all the factors we addressed in the last comparative video. They included all the following. Cause, risk factors, incidence, pathology, symptoms, diagnosis, management options, prognosis, and mortality. Starting with cause, 
In keeping with our very reason for even comparing heart attack and Alzheimer's, they are both due to estrogen deficiency. So the main cause is estrogen deficiency for both. And once again, estrogen loss at postmenopause sets the stage for the aging process to begin. Both heart attack and Alzheimer's are the result of that aging. You know this is true simply by virtue of the fact that you see neither of these diseases before postmenopause. The fact that both are diseases of aging is undeniable, but rarely does one causative factor act alone. Most of the time, several factors contribute to a disease, and that's why we have risk factors. A basic principle of risk factors is that the more you have, the higher your risk for the disease. So here's a chart of the risk factors for heart attack, and you've seen it many times before if you've been watching my videos in order. And here is a chart of risk factors for Alzheimer's, which you've also seen many times before. <laughs> Obviously, the most glaring thing of all is that most of the risk factors for Alzheimer's are also risk factors for heart attack. Most people have no idea that there is an absolute overlap in these two diseases. People talk a lot about adopting lifestyle and dietary habits that are heart healthy, but you rarely hear them talk about doing what is brain wealthy. There is a general assumption that Alzheimer's is just something that happens to you and is beyond your control. But Looking just at the risk factors alone, you can see that such is definitely not the case. You have as much control over avoiding Alzheimer's as you do over avoiding a heart attack. And that's true for every risk factor except the genetic ones. This is why the quiz question targeted the genetics of Alzheimer's. But there are two categories of genetic mutations for Alzheimer's. I taught you all about them in video number 248, and they are not the same with regard to your ability to modify them with your lifestyle choices. Early onset Alzheimer's is beyond your control, but fortunately those mutations are very rare. And you have lots of control over late onset Alzheimer's. And all the other non-genetic risk factors contribute much more to the incidence of Alzheimer's. Notice that diabetes type 2 is a risk factor for both diseases. I cannot tell you how incredibly detrimental it is for them. You are automatically at high risk for a heart attack if you have diabetes type 2 because of the metabolic impact it has on your entire body. And as I taught you in video 266, some people refer to Alzheimer's as diabetes type 3. And that's because of the metabolic impact it has on your brain. There's just no separating diabetes type 2 from either of these diseases. I think that this commonality of risk factors for heart attack and Alzheimer's is one of the most interesting aspects of comparing these two diseases because most people don't think of them as overlapping. And this overlap actually sets us up for the next factor, which is incidence. Despite the numerous overlapping risk factors, Heart attacks are still much more common than Alzheimer's. Heart attacks occur in one out of three women. Alzheimer's occurs in one out of six women. So heart attacks are twice as common as Alzheimer's. But remember, those statistics are based on known cases of these diseases. And because both heart disease and Alzheimer's disease develop slowly over time, there are always more women with these diseases than we're able to count. You have a heart attack after years or even decades of fatty plaque buildup and hardening of your arteries, and you discover you have Alzheimer's decades after the first pathological changes occur in your brain. And pathology is the next factor. So what are the pathological comparisons between heart attack and Alzheimer's? Well, interestingly, they both involve some type of plaque. The plaques that cause a heart attack are fatty plaques. 
They consist of cholesterol and triglycerides that collect inside your heart arteries. You learned that in video number 161. While the plaques of Alzheimer's are beta amyloid protein plaques, they consist of a normal protein that becomes too sticky and collects outside your neurons. That was video 242. And both heart attack and Alzheimer's have a second pathological feature in addition to the plaques. Heart attacks involve hardening of your arterial wall, making it brittle and less stable. And Alzheimer's involves tangling of the tau protein that disrupts the support of your neurons. And the result is that they are less stable too. Isn't it interesting that both diseases have both plaques and something that disrupts the integrity of your anatomy? You see, I find similarities like this just fascinating. And then what about symptoms? Here, we need to make a distinction between early and late symptoms for both diseases. And that's because there's a big difference in one and not the other. In the early development, both of what turns out to be a heart attack and what turns out to be Alzheimer's, you have no symptoms at all. And this so-called early aspect of the symptoms lasts for years, even decades for both diseases. But once you have enough plaque buildup and arterial damage in your heart, you have a sudden critical event that we call a heart attack. And it's due to progressive occlusion of your heart arteries such that the flow of blood and oxygen is impaired. This is not the case for Alzheimer's. Instead, with Alzheimer's, once you have enough plaques and tangles in your brain to interfere with brain function, there never comes a critical event. Your cognitive function just continues to deteriorate over time. It's faster in some people than in others, but it doesn't culminate in an emergency. The decline is slow and irreversible. So recognizing a heart attack should be easy, but alas, most women and most doctors fail to diagnose a heart attack as it occurs in a woman. And that's because all the research and all the common knowledge about heart attack symptoms pertain to those in men, not women. Women do not have crushing chest pain. They do not even have pain. And anything they do experience does not involve their chest. You know, I looked at images of heart attacks in women on the internet, and every single one of them showed a woman grasping her chest. The internet is so inaccurate on so many things. No wonder women have no idea they're having a heart attack when they have one. Jaw, neck, and back, those are the locations of heart attack symptoms in a woman. Jaw, neck, and back, and there's no pain. I even heard doctors say, women are so difficult when it comes to heart attacks. They just never come right out and say they're having chest pain. Duh, that's because they aren't having chest pain. And believe it or not, cardiologists are the doctors I've heard lodging that ridiculous complaint. Instead of chest pain, women feel tightness, aching, pressure, squeezing, fullness, tingling, or burning that is not in their chest. And for Alzheimer's, diagnosis can be difficult too, but not for the same reason. The symptoms of Alzheimer's are similar in men and women. The problem is that there are many different kinds of dementia. I gave you an entire video on them. It was video number 241. Some of the dementias are difficult to distinguish from Alzheimer's. Some of them eventually become Alzheimer's. And some of them are a mix between Alzheimer's and some other kind of dementia. So labeling can be less than accurate. I guess you could say that both chest pain and brain drain are very misleading terms for what you can expect to alert you to development of heart attack or Alzheimer's. Heart clog and brain fog would be more accurate. But what diagnostic tests are there to help? 
For an impending heart attack, we have all sorts of diagnostic tools. Labs, electrocardiograms, now called ECGs, echocardiograms, imaging studies, treadmill tests, catheterizations. It's easy to assess your heart. I mentioned ECGs. Well, the acronym ECG used to be EKG. But when acronyms started sprouting up for everything, it was changed to ECG. A lot of other acronyms changed too. The emergency room went from being the ER to the ED for emergency department. But of course, ED is also an acronym for erectile dysfunction, so I, I don't think that one's that much of an improvement. <laughs> In any case, all these diagnostic tests for heart disease and heart attack are in widespread use. The problem is that they're not done on enough women, and this is because women don't suspect they need them, and doctors don't offer them. So the diagnosis gets missed when it shouldn't. When in doubt, please get a cardiac evaluation. Now, for Alzheimer's, there is no diagnostic test, nor is there a screening test. If you ask me, that's what makes it one of the 10 most unwanted diseases for most people. You have to wait for symptoms to give you a hint that there's a reason to diagnose it. But by then, there's nothing that can diagnose it. It's a lose-lose situation, both literally and figuratively. What you have is a situation in which two diseases with many overlapping risk factors are both somewhat difficult to diagnose, but for completely different reasons. And failure to diagnose them has dire consequences. But if you do have a lot of the risk factors, there are a whole bunch of management options for preventing them. And the vast, vast majority of the management options that work the very best for both are diet and lifestyle options. I don't know about you, but I love it when diet and lifestyle options are the most effective ones. These are the things that you can utilize to any degree you wish without the need for a prescription, without the hassle of side effects, and with constant feedback about your success. The sad, sad thing is that people tend to be unwilling to take responsibility and prevent them. They'd rather pop a pill. And with diet and lifestyle, you can employ them long before you start developing the disease. Whereas with a pill, you're more likely to take it once you've already started developing the disease. Bridging the gap between losing your own estrogen and starting estrogen replacement decreases the chance that either heart disease or Alzheimer's will start developing in the first place. And you already know that estrogen replacement will only prevent them while you are taking it. If you stop it, the aging will begin to set the stage for the pathological changes that lead to a heart attack and Alzheimer's. But one of the biggest differences about management options for heart attacks and Alzheimer's lies with the statin drugs. The statins decrease cholesterol in all parts of your body. Now, that's beneficial for your heart arteries where you don't want cholesterol, but that's detrimental for your brain where you do want cholesterol. So, the most common and very effective management option for your heart is one of the very causes of Alzheimer's. This is partly due to what I said in the beginning of this video. People think more about their hearts than they do about their brains. Now, prognosis is the next factor to consider. With a heart attack, women do not fare well. And this is mostly because of the failure to recognize a heart attack as a heart attack. And that leads to misdiagnosis as something much less severe like indigestion. So even if a woman goes to the emergency room, she's likely to get sent home and she dies. I don't mean to be morbid, but this happens all too often. Women and doctors fail to take the symptoms of heart attack in women seriously enough to give women the evaluation and treatment they deserve. And that makes the prognosis dismal. And we all know 
that the prognosis of Alzheimer's is dismal. It's a disease that makes you a stranger to yourself and to everyone else. It robs you of your memory. And most of us can't think of anything worse. And finally, for mortality, this is the most depressing thing of all. Here are the statistics. Of the one in three women who suffer a heart attack, one in two will die from it. Of the one in six women who get Alzheimer's, all of them will die from it. The mortality of heart attacks in women is unacceptable. Every woman and every doctor should know the symptoms of a heart attack in women. In women. But I know of no one but myself who is teaching you what they are. And doctors have no excuse. Additionally, there is no excuse for underusing the diagnostic tests for treatments for heart attacks. Additionally, there's no excuse for underusing the diagnostic tests and treatments for heart attacks. Now, the mortality rate for Alzheimer's, while absolutely terrifying, is more understandable. There's no way to anticipate it unless you have a genetic predisposition for it. But if you do anticipate it, and you do everything in your power to avoid it, it's actually possible to have the pathological changes of Alzheimer's and not show signs of it cognitively. I've taught you that in previous videos. And if you don't exhibit the disease, you can live normally regardless of whether or not it's the eventual cause of your death. This is the epigenetics I taught you in video 297. This is the epigenetics I taught you in video 279. So, would you say that heart attack and Alzheimer's have more similarities or differences? That's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? But at least now you know what to consider. Next week, we will do the final comparison between osteoporosis and Alzheimer's. That one is more interesting than you might think. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you're so inclined. And menopausetaylor.me is the place for scheduling consultations. And I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.